Have you ever had one of those days when you just don't feel like busting out the textbooks or the worksheets to do homeschool? Or your kids are like, I don't want to do school today. Or you don't feel well. It's just kind of an off day. Might I suggest to you something called game schooling? Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Shirley. I'm a homeschool mom of two. I'm also a homeschool blogger at mylearntogether.com. On this channel and my blog, I share tips, tools, and resources on how to start your homeschool journey. If that's something you are interested in, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. Today's video is part of an open collaboration hosted by Abby from Rooted in Rest and Jessica from The Waldock Way. It's an open playlist which I will leave a link down below in the description box where you can see other homeschoolers and how they do homeschool. Today's, oh no, not today's. <laughs> this month's homeschool show and tell is all about educational toys and games. So I want to share with you how we do game schooling. So my kids are eight and five. So these games and toys that I'm gonna show you are very much appropriate for that age group. Depending on your child's situation, it may or may not be, you can be the judge of that. But my kids love these games. Some of them, um, and I'll tell you when we get to it, are more for my older one, my son, who is eight years old. So let's go. Number one is Continent Race. Continent Race is actually created by a kid. I will leave his incredible story down below in the description box, as well as a link to this game. This is a great game if you want to teach your kids um, geography in a fun way. So the object of this, ugh. so the object of this game is to collect all the cards that are specified in each continent. So how you play this is uh, you need at least two players to play this game. You'll choose your continent and then there are stacks and stacks of cards. When you choose your card, you will flip it and it'll say like, for instance, this one says Nicaragua. So um, as you can see, it has the flag, the country, as well as the capital of that country. And you have to know that, oh, Nicaragua, which continent is Nicaragua in? And you can look at the continents that you have chosen and you can see, okay, I have Europe and the Americas. Oh, okay, actually, actually, Nicaragua, oh, I can't say. <laughs> Nicaragua is in the continent of the Americas. So I would want to keep this one because I want to collect it. The goal is to collect all four cards for the continent or the continents that you have chosen and then you win the game. There's an advanced level, um, so a little harder, uh, harder way to play this game and you can check it out if you want to. Number two is Pizza Fractions. Pizza Fractions is a great way to introduce or learn more about fractions. So there are several ways to play it. Um, one of the most basic is they spin this little spinner and you have to, so if it's like, let's say here, if it's on one eighth, then you wanna pick one eighth of a pizza and then slowly you build a whole pizza. So the first person who builds one whole pizza wins the game. So this is a really, really fun way to introduce your little ones, like my Ellie who's in kindergarten, to fractions. Um, just fun way to do that. And then for my son who is actually learning fractions in his curriculum, and it's a, just a great way to just reinforce it in a fun way. Just a heads up, your kids might ask for pizza that day, maybe for lunch or dinner, because these um, pizzas, they really look real. 
Like when, when I was playing it, I actually wanted to eat pizza for dinner that night. Okay, number three is sums in space. This is another math game. Um, it's great to learn adding and subtracting. Another alternative you, that you may have heard of is called sums and swamp. I think, um, but they're both very similar in a sense that you learn adding and subtracting. So, the, so I'll show you the dice here. As you can see, the dice is, um, you have your adding, your plus signs and your minus signs, and then you have the numbers. So what will happen is when they roll the dice, they have to actually add or subtract in order to move the piece, the, their piece across the board. And in this case, across space. So let's say they rolled um, five minus one, then that's four. So they get to move four spaces. Um, and the goal is to just get from start to finish. There's another way to play it with this blast off section. And to be honest, we only played it like once or twice. I don't really get this part, <laughs> but this is a great one for kindergartners, first graders, even my second grader loves this. It's just a fun way to introduce it to young ones and reinforce it with your older kids. And number four is Mathological Liar. This is a really fun one if your kids like detective games. So what it is, is there are 50 cases in this box and you can start with two players and it goes up to four. So in each case, um, they will read what the case is. So it's a detective case, but in the back you will read um, the state, uh, the statement from like, if for instance, this one is from Tim, Sarah, Ava, and Will. So they will read a statement and what it is, is you actually have to use your math skills or different math skills for each case in order to solve the case or in order to know who the liar is. I would say this would be more for second grade and up. My daughter would, who's in kindergarten, she's not quite understanding this. So keep that in mind. Number five is Rush Hour. Rush Hour is a logic game. And the goal of this is, um, it's actually, it actually comes in a little pouch like this. So it's great for traveling as well. So if you're traveling, this is a great one. It's just everything goes into this little baggie. And um, the cards are stored in here. So you have beginner levels all the way up to advance. And what you do is you line up all the cards as um, exactly like what the picture shows. And your goal is to get that red car out of the slot right here. So it gets harder and harder as they advance. So this is a great one to exercise their brains. Even my five-year-old um, can do the beginner levels and it's just a great exercise for their brains. Number six is chess. This is our little chess board. Um, it actually folds out like this because it's a travel um, addition one, but all the pieces will stay in here. So chess is great for strategic thinking. They use actually both sides of their brains when they play chess. Left side is for object recognition and right side is for pattern recognition. So they, when kids or adults even play chess, they're really exercising their brains and using both sides of the hemisphere. And obviously you probably know chess, the goal is to capture the king. Um, we play chess on a regular basis. It took a while for my daughter to catch on. She's five right now, but she definitely knows how to move the pieces. She doesn't necessarily always win, especially against Big Brother, who loves, absolutely loves chess. So, but it's still a great game for young kids to start learning and playing. Okay, number seven, I have Outfox. 
Outfoxed is another one that we play probably on a weekly basis. My kids love this game. It's a collective game, like a cooperative game. So nobody wins or loses in this one. So if you don't like, you know, those kind of games, then this is a great one. Um, the goal, where's my, oh, here. All right, so this is what it looks like on the inside. The goal or the object of this game is that you work together to find out who the thief is. The thief is one of the foxes and he or she stole Mrs. Plumper's pot pie. And you want to find out who the thief is before the fox gets to the foxhole. Okay, number eight, we're almost done. Number eight is oh, the big box. This is called the QBA Marble Maze. My son loves anything that has to do with making marbles race. Uh, I don't know about you. Let me know in the comment section down below if that's the case for your daughter or your son. This is the second set of Marble Maze. We have, no, the third set. But um, we love this one because it's actually quite, it really gets them th to think how to build, you know, this, this whole maze. It's not easy. It requires, you know, a lot of thinking and um, really helps with their engineering skills. And number nine is Snap Circuit. We have the Snap Circuit Junior. So it comes with a circuit board as well as um, 101 experiments. So you can, this little booklet here will tell them how to build um, a project. And when they're done, they can check it off. So it goes, you know, quite basic to more advanced projects. Um, so this is great for like STEM, if you are into that, um, and they, it makes music and lights. And as you can see in this little video here, he can do art uh, while it spins on this motor. So it's really, really fun. Okay, number 10, we're almost done. The last one here I have today is Dabble Lab. Dabble Lab, I think we saw it at Walmart, but what it is is, um, it's they again it's kind of like a marble structure so they build it on this um board and they have to get the marble from top to the end but there are different pieces different shapes that they have to put on the pegboard to make the marbles go from top to bottom so that is marble mm, no that's dabble lab all right, I'm gonna give you a bonus one here just because I think it's a great one, especially for their brains. And it's called Gravity Maze. We've had this for so long. I think I got it off of like Facebook Marketplace for like $5. But um, it's another logic game by Think Fun. And what it is is again, they're, um, this one is similar. So it's the same company as Rush Hour. So you go from beginner level all the way to expert and there the cards will show you the starter pieces. So the pieces that you have to use to start. And then right here, it says add to grid. So these are the pieces that you can add to the grid. And the goal is to get the marble to go through the maze and end up in this black cube. Oh, uh, no, not black, the red cube. Um, so this is a great, great game to train and exercise their brains. As you can see, some of these games or toys are related to STEM, and that is one of my kids' favorite subjects. I'll leave an iCard up here if you want to see that video where I go through how we do STEAM in our homeschool. All right, guys, those are my top 10 educational games for game schooling, for those off days, or even a great gift guide for those of you who are still doing um, Christmas shopping. 
And leave me a comment down below. Share with me which one of the 10 that I just showed you is your favorite. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.